Hey guys, and welcome to my low-level Krill guide. When you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. So first up, we have the requirements for Krill, aka Zamorak. Now, even though this is a low-level guide, I highly suggest you get yourself at least 70-plus combat stats. Now, there's no best way of killing Krill, however, I personally prefer using magic over melee. You will also require level 60 strength or agility to access the Godwash dungeon, and you require at least a partial completion of the Troll Stronghold quest, but you're better off finishing it completely. Now, I'm aware that there are quests like Edgar's Roost and stuff that can get you to Godwash dungeon faster, however, this is a low-level guide and you should remember that, and most of the people watching this video will not have access to those special quests and teleport tabs. Some useful things are a Vampirism Aura, which heals you for the damage that you do, at least 5% of it, any Blood Amulet if you have the money for one, as this is pretty much extra passive healing from the minions inside the dungeon. Super Anti-Poison Potions are definitely recommended here and are almost a requirement, especially if you're a low level player, because they reduce so much damage that you take throughout an hour, and any Food Holding Familiar, aka a B.O.B. Familiar will be useful here, or a healing familiar like a Bunyip or Unicorn Stallion. I have two example gear setups on screen. One is a melee setup using a skill cape and the other is a magic setup using a obsidian cape, which is only like 80k GP. The items are listed on screen if you want to read them for yourself, but the magic setup is pretty much a crystal staff, which is a tier 70 staff and subjugation armor. If you have a better staff, like a Staff of Light, or Armor of Battle Staff, or even maybe a Obliteration Staff, just bring it along even though you're a low level player with a high level magic weapon. For the melee setup, you want to have yourself Bandle's Armor, which is tier 70 armor, which is pretty cheap, Berserker Ring, a weapon which is tier 70 or above, an example is the Masuta's War Spear, which is a higher level weapon, tier 82 to be exact, and it's pretty good as it has halberd range and such, but you can also bring along a gold sword or something else. As for your inventory setup, here's an example, even though there's a million different ways of setting up your inventory. For magic, you want to bring along some runes, your rock climbing boots to access the Godwash dungeon, some sharks or other food that you have, a defense potion and a magic potion, in this case being a grand magic and grand defense potion, which you can buy off the grand exchange. Of course, super anti-poison potions, in this case being free flasks, if you're going with melee, take super melee potions or super war master potions, which are pretty much Bible overloads that are a bit worse than actual overloads, but still pretty good. And if you're with melee, of course, do not bring the air runes as you do not require them. And the reason I'm not recommending you to bring prayer potions along is because you do not want to be using prayer at this boss because he will do some big hits on you with this special attack. Because this is a low level guide, I'm going to be showing you guys how to get to the Godwash dungeon completely from scratch using the rock climbing boots. If you have some quests complete, you can actually use a Trollheim teleport or a Godwash dungeon teleport tab. However, if you do not have those quests complete, being the Edgar's Ruse and the Mighty Fall quest, then you'll have to walk there using the rock climbing boots. Here's the obstacle that makes you require either level 60 strength or level 60 agility. Go past this obstacle. If it's your first time here, you will require some ropes to get down into the Godwash dungeon. Just saying. Then go inside the Zamorak encampment as seen on screen. This requires level 70 constitution, but if you have level 70 plus combat stats, you probably have this anyways. You will now have to get 40 kill count. The way you get kill count is actually by killing minions or followers of Zamorak. The easiest ones to kill are the imps and bloodfields. Do keep in mind that some of the monsters inside this encampment do require you to have a certain slayer level to kill them. So that's why I would say stick with the werewolves and the imps and the Gorvex or whatever they're called because they have no slayer requirements. Once you have 40 samurai kill count, enter the boss room as seen. Then create an instance on fastest spawn time to maximize the money, kills and experience you get per hour. This will cost 200k GP. If you do not want to pay this much GP, you can just enter the boss room, which is a standard spawn instance that everybody else can join. Once inside the boss room, if you are using magic, you want to stand in this corner. This way you'll take less damage from the minions. Of course, before you go in, pot up. 
As you guys can see, I'm potting up and I'm using tier 70 gear just like the recommended gear I showed to show you guys how easy this boss really is. Now by easy I mean Krill does not really have any big mechanics, in fact he only really has one. Do not ever use your prayers here and you want to have your prayer points at zero. This is also why I told you to not bring any prayer potions. As even with prayer points, if you are not using your prayers, sometimes Krill still uses his special attack. This is probably the reason why your prayer is drained when going inside the Zamorak encampment. If you do pray though, around half HP, Krill says Yar, and he does his special attack dealing a ton of damage. You can actually anticipate this attack and use the debilitate ability to counter the attack and decrease the damage by 50%. Now as you guys can see, it's very easy to kill Krill, you will use food every kill, especially if you have lower defense, however it's doable and when you're done you just bank. Keep an eye on your super anti-poison potion because every 6 minutes you'll have to use a new sim or take a new dose and this way you'll reduce a ton of poison damage because overall it really adds up and you're going to be eating much more food if you do not use those super anti-poison potions. Now the main drops that make you money here are the rare drops of course being subjugation robes or maybe a Zamorakian spear but the consistent money comes from the wines of Zamorak and the noted infernal ashes which are dropped by the minions and the boss and the regular coins that you do get. If you have a spring cleaner you can also bring it along for the salvage to be alked or disassembled for invention components in case you're a lower combat level and you still have invention unlocked. Now like I said before, having a Vampirism Aura is extremely useful here as it heals you back for some damage that you do, making you last much longer at Krill itself. If you have it, bring it and use it and it's going to help you out a ton. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and have enough information to solo Krill. If you have any questions whatsoever, drop them down in the comments below. Anyways, if you did find it helpful, please leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.